Welcome to Cute Fast Track Series for API 510 Pressure Vessel Inspection Code. In service inspection, rating, repair, and alteration. In the previous lecture, we discussed sub clauses 5.1, 5.2, and 5.3. In this lecture we will discuss the sub-clause 5.4 inspection for different types of damage mechanisms and failure modes and sub-clauses 5.5 types of inspection and surveillance for pressure vessels and highlight important information contained sub-clauses 5.4 and 5.5. Inspection for different types of damage mechanisms and failure modes API 571 describes common damage mechanisms and inspection techniques to identify them. Some example mechanisms are as follows. General and localized metal loss Sulfidation and high temperature H2S H2 corrosion Oxidation Microbiologically induced corrosion Naphthenic acid corrosion Erosion Erosion corrosion Galvanic corrosion Atmospheric corrosion Corrosion under insulation Cooling water corrosion Boiler water condensate corrosion Soil corrosion Ammonium bisulfide and chloride corrosion Carbon dioxide corrosion Surface connected cracking Mechanical fatigue cracking Thermal fatigue cracking Caustic stress corrosion cracking Polythionic stress corrosion cracking Sulfide stress corrosion cracking Chloride stress corrosion cracking Subsurface cracking Hydrogen induced cracking Wet hydrogen sulfide cracking High temperature microfissuring Microvoid formation And eventual macro cracking High temperature hydrogen attack Creep Stress rupture Metallurgical changes Graphitization Temper embrittlement Hydrogen embrittlement Blistering Hydrogen blistering More detailed information and more damage mechanisms concerning corrosion, cracking, etc., including critical factors, appearance, and typical inspection and monitoring techniques are found in API 571. The presence or potential of damage in a vessel is dependent upon its material of construction, design, construction, and operating conditions. The inspector should be familiar with these conditions and with the causes and characteristics of potential defects and damage mechanisms. Inspection techniques for each of the potential damage mechanisms that exist for each pressure vessel should be part of the inspection plans. Vessels in cyclic service cycles of pressure, temperature, or combinations of both pressure and temperature should be evaluated for potential fatigue cracking failures and have appropriate inspections planned. Typical examples of vessels in cyclic service include coke drums, mole sieves, and pressure swing adsorbers. The following considerations should be evaluated where applicable for vessels in cyclic service. The fatigue design criteria from the original code of construction and any special precautions and or fabrication details. 
the types of vessel internal and external attachments and nozzles, longitudinal and circumferential weld joint peaking, repairs, modifications, and their potential for fatigue cracking due to the stress intensification at these locations. The potential for internal or external corrosion and environmental stress corrosion cracking and their potential effect on the fatigue life of the vessel. The appropriate NDE an inspection frequency to detect fatigue and the need for out of roundness measurements and measurements of weld seams for peaking or flattening. Types of inspection and surveillance Different types of inspections, examinations and surveillance are appropriate depending on the circumstances and the pressure vessel. These include the following Internal inspection On-stream inspection External inspection Thickness inspection Corrosion under insulation inspection Operator surveillance Pressure vessel internal inspection General The internal inspection shall be performed by an inspector in accordance with the inspection plan other qualified personnel, for example NDE examiner, may assist the inspector but not replace in the internal inspection, when approved and under the direction of the authorized inspector. An internal inspection is conducted from inside the vessel, and shall provide a thorough check of internal pressure boundary surfaces for damage. Manway or inspection port inspections can be substituted for internal inspections only when the vessel is too small to safely enter, or all internal surfaces can be clearly seen and adequately examined from the manway or inspection port. Remote visual inspection techniques may aid the check of internal surfaces. A primary goal of the internal inspection is to find damage that cannot be found by regular monitoring of external CMLs during on-stream inspections. Specific NDE techniques, for example wet fluorescent magnetic particle testing, alternating current field measurement, eddy current examination, ET, PT, etc., may be required by the owner, user to find damage specific to the vessel, or service conditions and when needed shall be specified in the inspection plan. Pressure vessel internals When vessels are equipped with removable internals, internals may need to be removed, to the extent necessary, to allow inspection of pressure boundary surfaces. The internals need not be removed completely, as long as reasonable assurance exists that damage in regions rendered inaccessible by the internals is not occurring to an extent beyond that found in more accessible parts of the vessel. Internal deposits and linings The inspector, in consultation with the corrosion specialist, should determine when it is necessary to remove deposits or linings to perform adequate inspections. Internal deposits Some deposits, as coke, are permitted to remain on a vessel surface. When these deposits protect the vessel, or do not cause deterioration of the surface. Spot examinations at selected areas may be required to determine the vessel surface condition. Internal linings for example refractory, strip linings, plate linings, coatings, should be thoroughly examined. It is not necessary to be removed if they are in good condition, and there no reason to suspect that damage is occurring behind them. It may be advisable to remove small portions, 
if the lining appears damaged, bulged, or cracked. External NDE techniques may be advisable to explore for damage beneath linings. As illustrated in figures, examples of pressure vessel internals, internal linings refractory, manway or inspection port inspections, Remote visual inspection techniques. On stream inspection of pressure vessels, the on stream inspection may be required by the inspection plan. All on stream inspections should be conducted by either an inspector or examiner in accordance with the inspection plan. All on-stream inspection work performed by an examiner shall be authorized and approved by the inspector. When on-stream inspections of the pressure boundary are specified, the appropriate NDE techniques shall be specified to detect the damage mechanisms and their associated flaw types identified in the inspection plan. The inspection may include a number of examination techniques to assess damage mechanisms associated with the service. The external thickness inspection may be a part of an on-stream inspection. Techniques used in on-stream inspections are chosen for their ability to identify particular damage mechanisms from the exterior and their capabilities to perform at the on-stream conditions of the pressure vessel for example, metal temperatures. There are inherent limitations when applying external NDE techniques trying to locate internal damage. Issues that can affect those limitations include type of material of construction, alloy, type of parent material, plate, pipe, casting, weldments, nozzles, support saddles, Reinforcing plates, internal attachments, internal lining or cladding, physical access and equipment temperature, as well as limitations inherent to the selected NDE technique to detect the damage mechanism. On stream inspection may be acceptable in lieu of internal inspection for vessels under the specific circumstances. In situations where on-stream inspection is acceptable, such inspection may be conducted either while the vessel is depressurized or pressured. External inspection of pressure vessels Visual external inspections are normally performed by an inspector. However, other qualified personnel may conduct the external inspection when acceptable to the inspector. In such cases, the persons performing the external inspection in accordance with API 510 shall be qualified with appropriate training, as specified by the owner user. External inspections are performed to check the condition of the outside surface of the vessel, insulation systems, painting and coating systems, supports, and associated structure, and to check for leakage, hot spots, vibration, the allowance for expansion, and the general alignment of the vessel on its supports. During the external inspection, particular attention should be given to welds used to attach components for example reinforcement plates and clips for cracking or other defects. Any signs of leakage should be investigated so that the sources can be established. Normally, weep holes in reinforcing plates should remain open to provide visual evidence of leakage as well as to prevent pressure buildup behind the reinforcing plate. Vessels shall be examined for visual indications of bulging, out of roundness, sagging, and distortion. If any distortion of a vessel is suspected or observed, the overall dimensions of the vessel 
shall be checked to determine the extent of the distortion. Any personnel who observe vessel deterioration should report the condition to the inspector. Inspection of buried vessels Buried vessels shall be inspected to determine their external surface condition. The inspection interval shall be based on an assessment of the cathodic protection system if any exists effectiveness and on corrosion rate information obtained from one or more of the following methods during maintenance activity on connecting piping of similar material from the periodic examination of similarly buried corrosion test coupons of like material from representative portions of the actual vessel or from a vessel in similar circumstances. Excavation of buried vessels for the purpose of inspection should take into account the potential for damaging the coating and or cathodic protection systems. Buried vessels in light hydrocarbon service should be risk assessed to help determine the inspection frequency and plans, as well as the need for cathodic protection, coating system maintenance, and other mitigation activities. Scanning UT thickness readings and, or other appropriate scanning NDE methods, for determining the condition of the external surface condition, could be conducted on the vessel internally to monitor for external corrosion. Thickness examination Thickness measurements are taken to verify the thickness of vessel components. This data is used to determine the corrosion rates and remaining life of the vessel. Thickness measurements shall be obtained by the inspector or examiner as required and scheduled by the inspection plan. Although thickness measurements are not required to be obtained while the pressure vessel is on stream. On stream thickness monitoring is the primary method for monitoring corrosion rates. The inspector shall review the results of the thickness inspection data to look for possible anomalies and should consult with a corrosion specialist when the short-term corrosion rate changes significantly from the previous identified rate to determine the cause. Appropriate responses to accelerated corrosion rates may include additional thickness readings, UT scans in suspect areas, corrosion process monitoring, and revisions to the vessel's inspection plan. The owner user is responsible to assure that all individuals taking thickness readings are trained and qualified in accordance with the applicable procedure used during the examination. Corrosion under insulation inspection Susceptible temperature range for corrosion under insulation. Inspection for corrosion under insulation shall be considered for externally insulated vessels and those that are in intermittent service or operate at temperatures between 10 degrees Fahrenheit and 350 degrees Fahrenheit for carbon and low alloy steels. 140 degrees Fahrenheit and 350 degrees Fahrenheit for austenitic stainless steels. 280 degrees Fahrenheit and 350 degrees Fahrenheit for duplex stainless steels. Susceptible locations for corrosion under insulation on equipment. With carbon and low alloy steels, corrosion under insulation usually causes localized corrosion. With austenitic and duplex stainless steel materials, corrosion under insulation 
usually as in the form of external chloride stress corrosion cracking. On vessels, the most susceptible areas include above insulation or stiffening rings, nozzles and manways, other penetrations, for example ladder clips, pipe supports, damaged insulation with areas of potential water ingress, areas with failed insulation caulking, top and bottom heads, other areas that tend to trap water. When developing the inspection plan for corrosion under insulation inspection, the inspector should consider areas that are most susceptible to corrosion under insulation, but be aware that locations for corrosion under insulation damage can be very unpredictable. If corrosion under insulation damage is found, the inspector should inspect other susceptible areas on the vessel. As illustrated in figure, on vessels, the most susceptible areas include above insulation or stiffening rings, nozzles and manways, top and bottom heads, other areas that tend to trap water. Insulation removal Although external insulation may appear to be in good condition, corrosion under insulation damage may still be occurring underneath it. Corrosion under insulation inspection may require removal of some, or all insulation, that is removing selected windows in the insulation. If external coverings are in good condition, and there is no reason to suspect damage behind them, it is not necessary to remove them for inspection of the vessel. Considerations on the need for insulation removal are not limited to but include Consequences of corrosion under insulation leakage History of corrosion under insulation for the vessel or comparable equipment Visual condition of the external covering and insulation Evidence of fluid leakage, for example stains. Equipment in intermittent service. Condition. Age of the vessel coating under insulation, if applicable. Potential for the type of insulation to absorb, hold more water, for example calcium silicate versus cellular glass. Ability to apply specialized NDE that can effectively locate corrosion under insulation without insulation removal. Alternatively, shell thickness measurements done internally at typical corrosion under insulation problem areas may be performed during internal inspections. But the inspector should be aware that corrosion under insulation damage is often highly localized and therefore may be difficult to detect from the inside diameter of a vessel. Operator surveillance Operators making their rounds or as part of their normal duties in the process unit should be advised to report anything unusual associated with pressure vessels and pressure relieving devices to the unit inspector. Such things include vibration, signs of leakage, unusual noises, insulation deterioration, relief device having opened, Distortion, denting, temperature excursions, presence of rust stain coming out from under insulation, or other barriers or crevices, aka rust bleeding, etc.
Review questions. Question number one. Pressure vessels are susceptible to various types of damage mechanisms. The various types of damage mechanisms include all of the following except. Answer is A. Question number two. Inspectors should know what specific detailed information concerning the many common damage mechanisms DMs, that can be found in. Answer is C. Question number three. Which of the following considerations should be evaluated where applicable for vessels in cyclic service? Answer is D. Question number four. While inspecting an operating vessel you observe that cracks are present in the connecting welds for fillet welded attachments and nozzle reinforcing pads. You also notice vibrations are occurring in the assembly. Before you recommend corrective actions you should. Answer is D. Question number five. While inspecting an inspector observe that pressure vessel gauge glass vibrating. Before you recommend corrective actions you should. Answer is D. Question number six. The internal inspection shall be performed by. Answer is A. Question number seven. 
Equipment not designed for entrance by personnel. Answer is D. Question number 8. Vessel internals need not be removed completely, as long as reasonable assurance exists that damage at vessel areas covered by the internals is. Answer is A. Question number 9. Internal inspection reveals a convex bulge on a seamless ellipsoidal head, where the metal has pulled into the vessel, between the head to shell weld and the knuckle of the head. Of the following, which would be the most likely recommendation? Answer is A. Question number 10. Which of the following is a true statement regarding vessels equipped with removable internals? Answer is A. Question number 11. If internal linings are in good condition, and there is no reason to suspect that damage is occurring behind them, what does API 510 state? Answer is B. Question number 12. If the lining appears damaged, bulged or cracked, it may be advisable to do all of the following except. Answer is A. Question number 13. All on-stream examinations should be conducted by. Answer is B.
Question number 14. Which of the following statements are not true regarding on-stream inspections? Answer is B. Question number 15. Who should perform external inspections of a pressure vessel that is out of service? Answer is A. Question number 16. During the external inspection, particular attention should be given to Answer is A. Question number 17. An external inspection of a pressure vessel shall at least Answer is B. Question number 18. While inspecting an operating vessel you observe that distortion of a vessel. Recommend corrective actions you should. Answer is A. Question number 19. Weep holes in reinforcement plates should. Answer is B. Question number 20. Weep holes in reinforcement plates should remain open to provide visual evidence of leakage. What other purpose do they serve? Answer is A. Question number 21. How is the inspection interval for buried vessels determined?
Answer is D. Question number 22. Although thickness measurements are not required to be obtained while the pressure vessel is on stream, why is on stream thickness monitoring performed? Answer is D. Question number 23. Who shall obtain thickness measurements of vessels during external inspection? Answer is C. Question number 24. When short-term corrosion rate changes significantly form the previous identified rate, the inspector should Answer is A. Question number 25. During an external inspection with thickness measurements of a pressure vessel, an inspector calculates an accelerated corrosion rate from the previous inspection. What should the inspector do? Answer is D. Question number 26. Who is responsible to assure that all individuals taking thickness readings are trained and qualified in accordance with the applicable procedure used during the examination? Answer is B. Question number 27. Regarding corrosion under insulation inspection of externally insulated vessels, the susceptible temperature range for carbon and low alloy steels refers to which of these operational temperature ranges? Answer is A. Question number 28. Regarding corrosion under insulation inspection of externally insulated vessels, the susceptible temperature range for austenitic stainless refers to which of these operational temperature ranges? Answer is D. Question number 29. What form of corrosion does corrosion under insulation usually cause with austenitic stainless steel materials?
Answer is D. Question number 30. What form of corrosion does corrosion under insulation usually cause with carbon and low alloy steel materials? Answer is A. Question number 31. What is an alternative to removing insulation from a pressure vessel during a shutdown that is suspected to have corrosion under insulation? Answer is B. Question number 32. Who should be advised to report anything unusual associated with pressure vessels and pressure relieving devices to the unit inspector? Answer is D. This lecture is prepared by Samir Saad, and this is his profile. <laughs>